Hello, and welcome back to another empowering episode of Pet Talks with Megan De La Concha. I am so excited to be here, and I'm so excited that you are here if you're listening to this with me right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome. If this is your first time listening, super excited that you're here. I hope you get a lot out of this episode. It is packed with a lot of different aspects and and a multidimensional episode, if you will. And so welcome and just sit back, relax, and just take it all in and then go binge watch or binge listen to the rest of the episodes. But I am very excited that you're here. Um, Tell me in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube or wherever you can leave a comment. I'm not sure if you can do that on Apple or Spotify or any other listening platform, but I want to know how you found me. Was it, are you um, following me on social media? Are you a longtime listener from, from YouTube? Um, Was it, you know, a referral from a friend, a share, anything? I'm very interested to know how my audience is getting to me. And I just like to be connected, right? I mean, we can't see each other, you know, physically. Um, So this is kind of one of the other ways that I just like to connect with you, see where you're listening from and how you got to this place. So I hope you get a lot out of this episode and I hope that you stay for a while Um, And I hope you take what you need and you leave what you don't. And if you are a longtime listener, thank you so much for being so faithful and coming back. I love getting all the messages from my peeps, from my pepsters or my pep stars, Mm, if you will. See what I did there? See what I did? So (laughs) my pep stars, my people, I love interacting with you and all of your messages, um, They truly do so much more than I think you would realize until you're actually in this space, sitting in this seat, doing it. Um, So yeah, so thank you so much for being here. So again, this is in a very packed episode with a lot of amazing information. But as I was preparing for this, I just felt I could not, I couldn't break this up any more than I already have um, without leaving really key information out. And I didn't want to do this as a three-part series because I wanted you guys, like it all just, it flowed, right? Is that the right word? <laughs> it, it was so in sync with each other that I didn't want to lose the momentum um, of me speaking this truth and you hearing it. So, and I didn't want you to listen to one part and then not be able to listen to the other three parts. I want you to get this all in one sitting. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Today's episode um, is really about What I think and what I have taken from my coaching, um, from my own practice that I practice on myself and also that I work, you know, with with my clients and the different programs that I have available, um, what are the three keys, either key things or keys, let's just call them keys. What are the three keys that you need to truly unlock the door of transformation. So if you will, picture a door with three locks on it. And it's not the slider lock. It's, you know, it's a lock that requires a key and you need all three of them to actually open that door, which symbolizes transformation and change. And so what are the things that you need in your life in order to build a foundation and cultivate and facilitate true transformation, right? So this is going to be kind of a soft truth and a hard truth today. And I'm going to kind of go through it, not quickly, because I don't, you know, this is, there's, for me, there's no time constraint. Um, For you, I want to respect your time. And I think I can get out more (laughs) in less time uh, instead of just kind of rambling on and on and losing and losing you guys. So, because sometimes I lose myself, right? So let's start with, um, with awareness. And I want you guys to all understand that where you are in your life right now, if you are feeling any type of way, um, stuck, if you feel trapped, if you feel defeated, if you feel like, woe is me, I'm not doing anything, I'm not going anywhere, and you haven't yet tried 
I'm not talking about if you are pursuing and you're in the middle of transforming and you're in the middle of working on yourself and you feel stuck. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you have been doing the same dang thing over and over and over again for your almost your entire life. And now I know my audience, I know the ages are between ages 30 and 45. So We've had a really long time to be doing the same things over and over again. If you are sitting there complaining about your life and you haven't done a dang thing about it, you're the problem. You are the problem. And I do. I say that with love because I am the problem or was the problem in my own life until I realized I was the problem. But the wonderful thing about that statement is that you are also the solution right? It is not dead in the water. You are the problem, which also makes you the solution. And you should find hope in that statement. And I hope that right now you find some type of inspiration. I hope your ears perked up a little bit because that's what we're going to talk about is how you become the solution to your problem, which is you, which could be said, how you get over yourself to become your best self. All right. So the first thing that we need to understand is having awareness and self-awareness is so huge and it's so broad and it involves so many different things, but let's get down to the basics of what self-awareness is. If you don't understand, or if you don't know what your true desires are, what your wants are, what it is you really need, what motivates you, if you don't know what triggers you, if you don't know what makes you angry and makes you mad and makes you irritable, you just know that you're mad and irritable, but you don't dive into all aspects of what makes you you, what makes you this this being, because we are not a human doing, we're a human being. If you don't explore and just take a step back from yourself, right? Back away from the mirror, Let's get out of our heads, right? Get over yourself so that you can look at yourself and find out what these different things are. If you don't know or understand any of these things about you, then you're never going to be able to take the first step in accepting who you are in the transformation process. And this is key. This is really step number one, because you can't accept yourself if you're not aware of yourself. And you can be aware of yourself and not accept yourself. If you don't know, oops, I'm sorry. If you don't know, you can't do, right? If you don't know any better, and this is not an excuse. This is not an excuse because we're done with excuses. We are grown folk. We are done with the excuses. But if you don't know, you can't do. And it is your responsibility to find out. It's your responsibility. It's not anybody else's responsibility. It's your responsibility to be in the know of who you are, everything about you, every single, you need to know yourself like you know your social media, Hmm? like you know the random person you're following and oh, I was going through the pictures and she has this and she has that or he has this and he's always doing that and my life just didn't work out for me and blah, blah, blah. I'm so freaking sick of hearing it. And you know why? Because I was, I said that too. I was in that place. I'm coming to you and at you with no judgment because everything I'm saying to you and the reason why I get so passionate about it is because I'm, I'm also talking to my own self. I've had to give myself many, many pep talks such as this one. So if you don't know, you can't do. And you have to stop blaming everyone else and everything else. So for me, I have a list of people I could quote unquote blame for the so-called things that I see or view as shortcomings in my life. Um, my parents, oh, they didn't, I, and I've used this one. I've used this one for years. I, I've told you guys before that my mindset around money has been um, short of favorable. <laughs> and I always found myself 
broke, even when I had a lot of money. I mismanaged money. Um, I've always had a poor mindset around money. I, I lived in a mindset of scarcity and lack, and my behaviors reflected beliefs that I didn't even, I wasn't aware that I had right? Until I thought, you know what? I'm so sick of this and I'm the problem. But I could have easily said my parents didn't teach me anything about money or good money habits. So I'm just not good with money, right? I'm just not good with it. I was in an abusive relationship for seven years and that broke me. That's why I can't have stable relationships. That's why I'm so depressed. That's why I'm so insecure. That's why I'm so sensitive. You know, I'm the victim, I have kids now and, and, and I can't travel and I can't go live in the big city or pursue my dreams, right? I have too much debt because I was over here going to school trying to better my life and here I am paycheck to paycheck. And don't get me wrong, I am not dismissing or minimizing any of these events in your life. As a matter of fact, I am highlighting them as points in your life where you can choose to do something differently instead of using them as an excuse. The running theme, uh, spoiler alert, the running theme of this episode is you have the power to choose. That's why you are the problem and you are also the solution and you can choose which one you're going to be. It's not an excuse anymore of, well, well, this person did that and, and it's because of this and it's because I got to go live with my mom and I got to take care of my sick aunt. Yeah, those are circumstances in your life, but those do not define your life at all, right? You can choose to do something differently. And I'm not saying it has to be an external act. You can choose to think differently. You can choose your perspective You can choose creating your own beliefs and dissolving other ones. Those things are not, those are not static things that are just embedded in concrete. They are very flexible. They are very moldable pieces of clay that you choose what you do with it. You are an adult. And so at some point you have to stop using these lame excuses because it's exactly what they are as reasons for why your life is what it is right now. You have a responsibility and accountability to say, you know, yeah, that happened, but that was then, and this is now, and I have a choice to make different decisions starting today, starting with my thoughts. You don't have to believe a negative thought. You don't have to think negatively. For so many of us, it's a default state, but it doesn't have to be. We can change that. You don't have to accept this or that as a limitation on your life. You know, you don't have to say, well, the reason I believe this is because I was I was told for it for so long. I was told it for so long. I saw it in my family for so long. I saw circumstances and I even created circumstances by my own behavior that reinforced this belief, right? That's where your belief comes from. But just as that belief was created in the same exact way, you can create new ones, but you are not a kid anymore. You have complete control and complete power over what it is you think, over what it is you believe, and the behaviors that correspond with that. And it is only done by the awareness that we have of our own selves. Most of us don't realize how negatively we speak about ourselves, about our lives, and about our circumstances. And here we are pointing the finger at everybody else. And that is one huge thing that I actually see with all of my clients is we do a specific exercise. And at the end of that exercise, which takes about a month, not one person has come back to me. And I'm going to be real candid. I've coached three people from beginning to end. And not one person has come back or has not come back and said, I never realized how negatively I spoke to myself. I never realized how mean I was to myself. And once you click into that awareness, it's like a light bulb that goes off because all of a sudden now you have the power because you're aware of, oh my gosh, this is how I really talk to myself. Wow. I didn't even know. Now you have the responsibility and the power to change that. Right? So 
you can say, uh, these are my strengths and these are my weaknesses when you are self-aware. And you can say, I will use and build on my strengths and I will also use and develop from my weaknesses instead of using them as excuses instead of saying my my weakness this is my weakness and i'm really triggered by this and you know those are excuses that you are using to set limitations on yourself and allowing you to stay in a victim role within your own life and then that creates your behavior it creates your neediness and relationships it creates your overspending in in your money relationship right it creates um stress on your own self because you're constantly doing things that don't make you happy because you either feel obligated to do them for other people because you have no boundaries you can't even set boundaries because you're not even aware of what boundaries you need in your life so you're constantly over exerting yourself you're constantly wasting time on things that you have nothing to do with that aren't your responsibility, right? Things that don't make you happy. You're constantly saying yes when you're saying no. That's on you. Well, my sister always needs this. My brother always needs money. My cousin always needs that. So? So? What does it have to do with you? If you're going to take that on as your responsibility, that's on you, is it not? It's not on them because they keep asking you for things. It's on you because you keep saying yes. Right? I know I should be better with my money. I know I need to budget more. I really desire. I really want a house. I really want to pay off debt. I really want to, you know, get a good grasp on savings. But I just am not good with money. My parents just... You know, they didn't teach me good money skills. Okay, so they're the only teachers on money skills? You can't Google a a YouTube video or an article or Dave Ramsey or, you know, Steve Harvey or Jen Sincero? Authors, different authors, and I know there's so much more out there. I'm just, these are the ones I've, I've had personally in my life. But like that's on you. So now you, so now you can, you continue to self-sabotage your financials your finances, your bank account, because you're constantly either spending money as soon as you get it because you're so afraid to lose it, right? Oh, I don't know when I'm going to have this again, so I might as well get, 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 get. Or you're not emotionally fulfilled, so you're spending money, right? To make you feel better, to fill a void in your life. That's on you. That's not on anybody else. And until you're aware of that, You can't do anything about it, but that's not an excuse. That's still your responsibility. And I don't know, or I didn't know, right? What is it? What does it say? What's the saying? Um, Ignorance, uh, not is bliss, but ignorance is not above the law or you can't go to court and be like, well, I didn't know that was wrong. No. Well, it's your responsibility to know what the laws are, right? Yes. A judge isn't going to go, oh, okay, yeah, you're, you know what? You're absolutely right. You didn't know. So next time, no, too bad, so sad. It's the same thing in your life. The I don't know or I didn't know is not an excuse. That is your responsibility to find out, right? That is your choice to find out, to become aware of exactly who you are and every aspect around who you are. It's like it's like tripping and falling on the ground and then in, in, in with one hand, you're trying to push yourself up and you're like, I know I can get up, I know I can get up. And on the other hand, your other hand is you're physically holding yourself down, but you're blaming it on everybody else, right? That's the, everyone else that's passing you by, right? That doesn't make sense. You are the problem, but you're also the solution. And awareness is just the first step because then after awareness comes acceptance. And it is in this moment when you choose to accept everything that you are and where you are, that is when the healing can really begin. And so many of us 
are afraid of accepting exactly who we are and where we are in this moment because we think that's going to like solidify and just concrete our ankles into the ground and that that's it for the rest of our life. We're not going to be any better than where we are if we accept or acknowledge where we are and who we are. We equate accepting to settling. And that is by far the opposite. We think that it's a nail in the coffin, right? But you weren't born this way. And you're not going to end up or die this way unless you, what, choose to do so. We have to change the narrative on accepting who we are. And accepting who we are and where we are is merely the starting point, which is so powerful because it is there in this space that choices are made, choosing to make different choices. But there are two ways to accept ourselves, right? We can accept and then just shrug our shoulders and settle for everything that's going on right now and use the oh so famous phrase, this is just who I am. If you don't like it, you can leave. This is just who I am. Like, excuse me? If that's not settling, I don't know what is. And lame. Like, 100% lame. Do, I do not ever want to hear anybody say, that's just who I am. Like, how weak are you? How ignorant are you to who you even are? If you're using the phrase, that's just who I am, then you really have no idea who you are. Because if you did know who you are, one, you wouldn't be saying that. And two, you'd be taking action steps to improve and develop who you are every single day. Like that would not be your mindset. That would not be your perception. It doesn't give you a ticket to just be an asshole to everybody because that's just who I am. Take it or leave it. Like get over it. Get over yourself. And that's absolutely ridiculous. So we can either accept ourselves and stay in that low mentality, or we can accept every single thing about ourselves from top to bottom, from left to right, from corner to corner. The things we love, the things we like, the things we aren't fond of, and dare I say the things that we hate. And it's okay to hate things about yourself because guess what? You don't have to live in that space. You can say, this really freaking irritates me. I hate this about myself. Okay, wonderful. That's good. You're aware that you have this feeling about something you don't like. And then you're accepting that, you know what? This isn't good enough for me because I hate the way I feel and I want to feel something different. And now I'm going to move forward and make the changes and walk a different line and walk a different path. And I'm going to speak differently and I'm going to think differently. I'm going to move differently and that my perception is going to be different. I'm going to communicate different. I'm going to do things different so that I can develop that. If I don't like this about myself, I can change it to be to become something that I love about myself. Right? That's the caveat. I think I was trying to say that really fancy. That's the caveat. Ca yes. Caveat. Caveat. Not Okay, anyway. Moving on, we can change the things that we aren't fond of or, or the things that we hate into things that, that motivate us and inspire us to improve upon. That right there is a change in perspective. Instead of looking at the things that you don't necessarily like about where you are in life or who you are in life and, and settling and saying, oh, I just want to cry about it all the time. And I'm really frustrated, but you don't want to do a dang thing about it. You can either stay there or you can say, you know what? Why don't I like where, why, where I am right now? And where is it that I want to be? And who is it that I want to be? What about my personality do I want to change to make better? Not to become somebody else, not to become a fake person, but to become a better person of you, to have more quality of life, to have a more quality quality of a personality, right? You can use that to inspire you and motivate you to improve upon these things about yourself and about your life. And when you do that, 
you will get what you're desiring. You will get what you want. It is a matter of fact. And where you accept who you are and where you are in this moment without any judgment, right? That cultivates a growth mindset. There's no need. There's no need, you guys, for the shame and and the guilt. There's no need for the self-loathing. I know we're humans and we do that, but being aware that you do that also kind of diminishes your practice and your habit of doing that because you catch yourself and you also have a growth mindset. When you are aware and you accept who it is you are right now and where you are right now, that is the gateway to healing. And that is the gateway to unlocking the next step to transformation because that's where you can make the changes that you want to make. When you accept everything you are, your past, your present, and your future with no judgment, then you can see exactly what you want out of yourself and your life and take the first step into truly developing a personal growth plan by asking yourself, what can I do differently? I don't have to stay in this being If you don't like who you are from head to toe, internally, externally, that's fine. You don't have to stay there. If you don't like where you are physically, externally, environmentally, that's good too. You don't have to stay there. So what are the things that you can do differently? Because the things that have brought you to this place, and I want you to understand this, You might think you don't have toxic habits and cycles and patterns, but you do. We all do. And that's exactly, it's these cycles, it's these patterns and these habits that have brought us to this moment of realizing we want and desire change. We want more from ourselves. We're not happy. We're not fulfilled. Something is wrong. Something is not right. We want to change something. How do I change it? The first thing you have to look at is what can you do differently? And that means in your every day. Because it's the things that you do constantly every day that has continued down this railroad track of where you are. So we have to derail the train. We have to take a sharp left and hang on tight and say, you know what? How do I think about myself every day? How do I talk to myself every day? What do I do? Do I just get up, wake up really late, sleep in, get up, go sit my butt on the couch, watch TV all day, go to work, blah, blah, come home, blah, blah, order a pizza, drink some beer, go to bed? Well, there's a lot of patterns and habits in there that I can point out. That may be a reason why you don't feel good physically, you don't feel good mentally, you don't feel good emotionally, and you don't feel good spiritually. Those are things that you can change right now on a daily basis. Those are bite-sized, digestible action steps that you can do, right, to cultivate transformation. What do my daily habits look like? What do my relationships look like? And what are the patterns in my relationships? Am I in a new relationship but dating the same man? What about my friendships? Am I, do I make different friends and are they all kind of the same type of friends? What do my jobs look like? What am I constantly getting mad and irritable about? What makes me really happy, like to the core, like joy? How do I talk to myself every day? What are the types of things that I go after? And am I really happy with my decisions? And if not, guess what? You get to make different decisions. You are not stuck with past decisions or circumstances. You exist here and now. Those are the coordinates of where you are in life, here and now. You do not exist in the past. You existed. You do not exist in the future because we just simply can't know that. 
right? But right here and right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, this is your life. And you have to have and take on the responsibility and accountability to make that life and make who you are exactly what you want it to be. You are the most powerful asset to your life. You have the responsibility and the accountability to make life and who you are exactly what you want. You are the most powerful asset of your life, but you have got to get over yourself to become your best self. Let go of the offense that someone has caused you. Apologize for the offense that you've caused someone else, right? And I just learned this the other day and I didn't know, side note. I, don't, I just learned this in my devotions with the Lord, but in the Bible, it states that um, when you go to lay down your gift or your sacrifice and you realize that there is someone out there with whom you've offended and who is at odds with you, God says, abandon your gift right then and there and go make peace with your spiritual brother and sister. That's how important it is. You go work it out with them and then you come work it out with me. Whoop! You better believe I was racking my brain of, oh my gosh, who have I offended and who has offended me? But the point is, you've got to let go of that stuff because you're using that as an excuse. You're harnessing that as an excuse. Well, I would have friends if so-and-so hadn't acted like such a jerk. Okay. And you have nothing to do with that. And I'm not saying you caused it, but you can't go try to make it right. Hmm? Like what's the situation surrounding that? So spiritual or not, get rid of your offenses. Lay down your weapons of pride and doubt and cynicism and resentment and bitterness and lay down your past for goodness sakes, people. Please get over your past. And I'm not saying it just happens in an instant, but do what you need to do to to let go of that. We walk around with all of this armor preparing to fight what's already happened. The past is gone. It's not coming back. But the only way we can make a circumstance that's familiar of our past come back is is by creating that environment for us, by our beliefs and our thoughts and the way we behave and blaming anything and anyone but you. You are the freaking problem. You're not special. You don't have the ability to figure out and control your entire life. You have to trust and trust requires not having all the answers. Trust requires you believing, even if it's just a little, that's all you need. A little faith, a little trust in something that is bigger and greater than you, even if you can't see it. And knowing and believing that you have the ability to do what it is that you want to make changes, to make the transformation, right? Knowing that is like insanely powerful. You're not going to have all the answers and you're not going to be the expert, but you do have the courage. You do have the faith that it takes to believe that you can do this and that you will build skill and you will build strength and God will give you what you need every step of the way when you need it. Let me be clear. He is not going to give you a full-on backpack full of water, a first aid kit, um, dehydrated fruit, trail mix, a sleeping bag, a pillow, extra socks, extra shoes, hand warmers. Stop. If you're waiting for him to fully fill up your backpack before you head into this, this world of changes and this transformation, you will be stuck forever. He is going to give you a stick of Slim Jim and his word. And he's going to tell you, you just need to walk. And I'm going to give you shelter when it's time to rest. And I'm going to give you food when it's time to eat. And I'm going to give you water when it's time to drink. That is faith. And that is trust in him and in yourself. Accepting who you are with no judgment so that you have a starting point. You have a baseline, a jumping off point. And we come to our, the last thing that we need, and that is simply a space for grace. 
We're constantly searching for things that make us feel comfortable, that make us feel like we're able to predict what's coming next. We like our lives to be predictable because it helps us cope better, right? It helps us. We like to prepare. We like to analyze. We like to plan because it's a security and it protects us, right? We don't like to feel discomfort. And what happens is we start to analyze and prepare and and find things that we want to change when we're in an uncomfortable situation. Our mind immediately goes to how can we change this, this situation to make this more comfortable for me, right? So when you create a space for grace where you can you can show grace to yourself, and this is something that I have had to learn many times over the years, and I never even knew I was learning how to show myself grace for the longest time. I couldn't even give you a definition of what grace was, honest to God speaking. And here I am, and now one of my coaching programs is called Ashes to Grace. God is amazing. He works and he works and he works when you don't even know he's working. (laughs) But when you create a space to show true grace to yourself, which grace also means acceptance, a soft acceptance of kindness and, and compassion towards who you are and everything you are right now. Creating a space for you to be able to be uncomfortable in situations That's what we need because it's going to get uncomfortable. And what happens is, you know, when we start to feel the anxiety or we start to feel a lack of a basic need, money, time, energy, our mind automatically starts to go into protection mode. So we start to fidget. We start to worry. We start to analyze because we start to do everything that we know how to do to try and make an uncomfortable situation more comfortable for us. And one of the really good examples of this is I just started taking this workout class and it is called The Class with Taryn Toomey and it's based out of New York. And it's a physically challenging class. You have your squats, you have your burpees, um, you have jumping jacks, you have all of that, but it's set to music and you go by the beat. But the instructors or the guides, as they call them, what you're hearing from them throughout the entire workout is not, come on, push harder, work off those french fries, that things that, things that kind of agitate our spirits, right? Things that kind of cause irritation that like, yeah, you know, like french fries were bad. So now we have to go work them off because those are bad things. That's, that's an irritation to your spirit and your soul. But what you hear from them are become aware. It's a constant be aware, be aware. What is happening in your body? Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to feel uncomfortable. So now your mind starts to do things and I, I do it all the time. I start to think about what I want for, for lunch after I'm done with this. I start, I start focusing on something else. Um, what's my to-do list for, for the day? Or, uh, I start to count in different patterns, right? Um, because I'm trying to take my mind off the burning in my thighs because I'm trying to make an uncomfortable situation comfortable instead of just allowing the space for my body to just feel everything in that moment. It's not forever, but it's something that I have to go through in order to make a physical transformation, in order to build muscle, in order to break down proteins, in order to lose excess fat, right? You have to go through uncomfortable situations to create transformation. If I just, you know, did it half ass, excuse my language, because it was comfortable, do you think? Versus the girl next to me who's like whoo, huffing and puffing and grunting and is like, my arms are like jello. Who do you think is going to reach their physical fitness goal first? Not me, because I'm over here trying to make this like, you know, like a 20 minute class and instead of, it's really an hour class. I'm not allowing myself to have this space that I need in order for my body to go through the transformation. And that goes for you internally as well. 
give yourself the grace to create this bubble around you that supports you and that lifts you, right? This is a part of you. This is you being a part of the solution. When you're going through a problem, when you're fixing a problem, when you are developing on a weakness or when you're making changes that create the most amazing life that is out there for you, that you are deserving of, it's waiting for you. When you start to walk that road, give yourself the grace and the breath to support you so that you're able to go through uncomfortable instead of trying to shift everything and 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 trying to change whatever it is you can you're grasping right you're you're <gasps> gasping for air because you're trying so hard to make what is something different and that's where we get stuck Instead of trying to analyze and figure out circumstances and situations and struggles so that it makes us feel like we're in control, it makes us feel like our life is going more smooth, it makes us feel less discomfort, we have to allow ourselves to just let it be. We have to explore this this space. Like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lean into this discomfort because I know I'm supported. I know I have what it takes to get through this. I don't necessarily like it, but it's what I need. I'm going to face this and I'm going to trust my thoughts and my breath can support me and my faith and my courage to keep going. It is going to lead me through whatever it is I'm going through without trying to change a single thing because there is a reason as to why you're feeling this discomfort. And it's something that you have to go through. And when we are constantly trying to change the situation to become a more favorable situation, a more comfortable situation, that's when we inhibit our growth and we inhibit our transformation. And that's why we stay stuck where we are. Right? Take what you need and leave what you don't. Every step of the way. You don't need a backpack full of of supplies. You don't need to read every single book. You don't need to listen to every single podcast before you start taking a step. It's doing nothing. You're still sitting still. You just need the, the courage to have the awareness and acceptance and the space to show grace for yourself as you move through this. That's what you need. Take what it is that you need, right? And then you be, and then that turns into, as you move, it turns into commitment and dedication and the discipline it takes for you to keep moving through these circumstances, through whatever it is that comes your way, th- through the discomfort. Take what you need every step of the way and leave whatever it is you don't need because when you do end up needing it, it will be there for you. You don't have to hoard everything and be like, okay, I've got it all. Um, I have a backpack full of what ifs. I'm prepared so that now I can confidently go on this walk, on this hike because I'll have my what if backpack on. No. No. You don't know what lies ahead of you. And you're carrying all this extra nonsense that's slowing you down. Because in that backpack is also fear and doubt. Right? And those negative beliefs and those those mindsets that are holding you down. What do you need to take the first step of feet? You don't even need shoes. Take what you need. And leave what you don't need. You are the problem. And that is such a beautiful saying. Because when you're the problem, you also become the solution. I know we're going a little bit overboard. That concludes today's episode. I hope you guys have a wonderful, empowering week. However, with that being said, (laughs) 
I feel I wasn't going to do this, but I do feel I need to, I want to put this out there for some, because somebody needs this right now. I can feel it. Somebody needs this. If what I said to you today really hit home with you and you're sitting there and saying, I know this and I want to do this so bad. I know I need to make a change, but maybe your external circumstances aren't really conducive to your transformation. Maybe you're really stuck in some really bad places and you need somebody to help you. You know you need you need outside help. Like I know I can do this and I want to do this and I will I will see this through, but I need someone to hold my hand because I've been trying and I've been trying and I've been trying and I cannot seem to get traction on this. But I know this is the road for me and I need help. I need a guide. I need a friend. If you said that or you're thinking that to yourself today. I want you to head over to megandelaconcha.com and book a call with me, please. It's 30 minutes. It's no obligation, but that's exactly what I do. But if you are looking to become aware and you're not sure how, if you're looking to accept yourself in everything that you are with no judgment, but you don't know how to do that and that's holding you back, and you cannot create this space because you just can't get through being uncomfortable, that's okay. I am here to help you. Book a 30-minute call with me on my website. That's megandelaconcha.com. If you cannot get through to my website for whatever reason, DM me, find me on Facebook. If you're on my email um, list, email me. It comes right to me. It doesn't go to anybody else, and I will reply back. I am a real person. Hello. Hello. DM me on Instagram, leave a comment below. I mean, I know you can't leave your contact information, but um, if you need help, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And it can just be a conversation and you'll get a lot out of 30 minutes. I guarantee you that. It's not a sales call. It's not a sales call. It's a discovery call. And it can be a one and done or we can work together. But if you felt that in your heart and your spirit, then I'm telling you your next step If you need confirmation on what your next step is, your next step is to book a call with me. I promise you that. Anyway, thank you guys for sticking through this with me. Um, Make sure to like, subscribe. Please share with your friends, um, your family and your friends, whoever. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know your celebrations, what you're struggling with. If there's something that you want me to address and talk about, please leave it in the comments. Let me know me no i am here as your coach as your guide this is not just me giving you advice i could do that all day long but if you have something specific that you are wondering that you need help with let me know i will do an episode for you specifically all right guys have a wonderful empowering week i will see you next time